to be being filled with the Holy Spirit is simply performing the function for which God created man inhabited by his making. Allowing him for who he is, God to be who he is in who I am. With the absolute right to play that role by his Holy Spirit in my soul that instinct plays in the animal. To be in me the origin of his own image, the source of his own activity, the dynamic of his own demands, and at all times exclusively the cause of his own effect. So there's only one person to be congratulated. He who created me. For God behaving is righteousness. And you and I, as we shall see in a moment, were created by God to the human vehicles of his divine activity, the means whereby his life could be released in righteousness, in human behavior. He came to be the truth about man. But because he was the truth about man, he was the truth about God. This is simple uh, logic. This is what the Bible is filled with, the obvious. And one of the primary responsibilities for the preachers to make the obvious obvious, because so often the obvious is so obvious it ceases to be obvious. In whose image did God make man? His own. In whose likeness to reflect whose glory? To take whom invisible out into the open where he could be seen? Well, man was created to... Reveal the glory of God. So man was created in all that he does, says and is to be the truth about God. And because the Lord Jesus was willing to be born a human being, being the truth about man, he could not but be the truth about God because the truth about man is that God created man to be the truth about God. Man in normality tells the truth about God. And there was only one man that's ever been born since Adam fell who told the truth about God. The Lord Jesus. Truth about God because he was the truth about man because the truth about man is that man was created to be the truth about God. Is that complicated? That's obvious. But man has fallen from that office. So what would you imagine in the light of these things would be the end product of our obeying the gospel and entering into the good of that which God has provided in Christ to restore us as human beings to our function. What would the ultimate end product be? Well, uh, look at Romans in chapter 8, verse 29. This is what God had in mind in the eternal ages of the past. Whom he did foreknow, he also did predestinate to be conformed to the image of his son. So when you're finally evangelized and people look at you, who should they see? The whole purpose of God in the redemptive and regenerative purpose that he has accomplished in the person of the Lord Jesus is that you and I should be conformed to his image, who for 33 years on earth as real man was conformed to the image of his father. So if you're truly evangelized, if it were the case, and it isn't, that you and I have arrived, who would others see in us by the way we behave? Well, Jesus, as others in him, saw the father behave. This is the end product of evangelism. You're not evangelized simply because you've made a decision to receive Christ as your redeemer, debt payer, escape hell and go to heaven. It's gloriously true that if you are prepared, humble enough to admit your guilt and trust Christ as your substitute, debt payer, God will accept you in the beloved. Your sins will be blotted out like a thick cloud. They'll be put away as far as the east is from the west. God will put them behind his back and bury them in the sea and he'll remember your sins no more. Gloriously true, but that isn't salvation. That's just reconciliation to God. That's just forgiveness. That simply is that which qualifies you to become one of his children an heir to that place that he's gone, of course, to prepare for us, but that isn't salvation. Salvation is the restoration to man of that life man lost in Adam so that by virtue of the presence of the creator within the creature given the right to be God, 
He, God, in the man, once more, will be the origin of his own image, source of his own activity, dynamic of his own demands, cause of his own effect, so that others looking at us see Christ's behavior. 